today we will study about the international organizational behavior which is our last topic under organizational behavior so i will make sure i add the index in the description you can directly move on to your relevant topic followed by that the explanation link so let's get started yeah so we can see international every country will have its own ethical uh, cultural it's its own uh, different way of governing its own different kind of people so everything will be different across different countries so the way the trends in industrial business works is categorized into three subcategories that is ethnocentric so in this we can see the parent company and the branch company okay so uh, the parent company means uh, if suppose i have started a company in my country country a and okay i am good with this country now i want to expand my business so I, I open my branch in country b now i need to make sure that in country b the company which i open the main positions in that uh, branch should be from the country a that is from my country only okay so that is how the ethnocentric model behaves next we have polycentric so if the name itself su uh, suggests that there will be uh, like uh, people from different cultural will be involved in in the organization so here we can see the parent company has uh, people from the parent country that is fine but in the branch country when i'm opening a branch uh, company right so there i don't want my country people to go and work in that country so i'll hire people from their own country uh, like people from the branch country I'll, and i'll place them in the branch uh, uh, what we can say the branch company right next is the geocentric so here it has nothing to do with uh, which culture or which country you belongs to it only says if you have skill just join that's it nothing specific so that is what geocentric next we see there are cultural differences and similarities so when uh, we compare the uh, branches uh, organizations anything so we have basically six uh, points to focus on first is the nature of people so for every quality we have three variations so for uh, nature we have good medium evil then relationship dominant harmony harmony subjection and, uh, similarly we have relation with people modality temporal focus or future like in terms of time then in terms of space so all these things will be like uh, we can compare any two culture or people from two different countries based on these six factors okay next we have hospited of state cultural dimension name is very crazy hofstede cultural dimension so what it says is he mentions about a uh, five dimensions of any culture okay okay in specific to corporate culture first is the power distance so this point talks about uh, if you want to talk something to your boss okay what is uh, the distance between you and your boss so this focuses on that and next we have individualism versus collectivism so here we can say about coalition like if you are uh, you have the capacity to keep the company on your own or if you are collaborating with other people and then you are uh, establishing any organization so india is moving from collectivism to individualism because now we have that exposure next we have masculinity versus femininity so now here uh, we have nothing to do with the gender or anything so uh, masculinity talks about the achievement the power the strength and all those thing next the femininity talks about uh, the taking care of helpful emotions all those things will come under femininity now next we have uncertainty avoidance so the best example to uh, explain this is well, you consider japan where if train comes late you will be given a certificate so that you can show that in your organization that it was not your fault that you came late but it was uh, the fault of the transportation department of the country so uh, what it's uh, overall says is that uh, they are not flexible to this kind of uncertainty so uh, they are strict to everything but uh, compared to Uh, some other countries or you take india even if the train or uh, any transport comes very late it's fine it's common so how comfortable we are with being in un uncertain so that is one of the factor next we have long term versus short term orientation so this is this focuses on the decision making thing next we have cultural adjustment so in this we, we focus on factors which varies across the country so uh, if we see motivation across cultures so it is studied and some theories were put forwarded like maslow's theory which says that uh, there are five stages and once the first stage is then we move to second stage physiological to social physical uh, physical physiological needs are done we move to safety needs if safety needs are done we move to security needs then security is done self esteem uh, realization so 
this is how the staircase goes but it is okay it is uh, eligible for other country except china where social need comes before physiological needs okay next we have herzberg's theory which says that if certain factors are not there it might lead to dissatisfaction but its presence will, will won't okay and the second point of herzberg's theory is there are some factors the presence of which will create uh, satisfaction but the absence of which will not create a dissatisfaction so that's the theory presented by the herzberg next we have achievement motivation so this simply says that the more you achieve the more you are mod- motivated that that's it so okay so these three theories were the motivation across different cultures and next we have the second point to study the cultural adjustment that is the interpersonal behavior across cultures okay so in this point we can say that because of globalization and the organizations have to deal with the people across different countries so they uh, they have to see what is happening in their country what is their uh, economical or political or cultural things and is our business is somehow uh, hurting their feelings or is their culture is somehow act is as an obstacle for the organization so all those things needs to be studied and then uh, decision making will happen so that is decided on the interpersonal behavior next we have leadership across culture so this is again a self experiment every country will have its own culture so based on their culture they will have different kind of leadership either participative self proactive team oriented value based so all these are different types of leaderships which uh, varies across different countries because of their culture next we have community communicating across cultures that is collective high context low context low and high uncertainty about it so different kind of communi- uh, communication uh, formats across decre- uh, different countries again based on culture so these were the four factors which we were using for uh, studying how the cultural adju- adjustment is affecting any organization okay right next we have environmental across culture so uh, in this we can see we have economic political ethical environment so overall what we are studying here is how the economic or what, what are the factors of economic which uh, are affecting the organizational behavior or culture similarly political how ethical environment so because they play a major role in how the organization organization should work okay if they have certain rules and regulations and, and the country in which you are opening your branch is is there any conflict between the politics of that country and the rules that you are making so those kind of things again the economic things it depends like if you are if you have an organization in your country it will have a different different competitive environment different uh, demand and supply for that particular domain and so all these things so, so all the economic factors like these uh, demands uh, competitions uh, value of money all these things of economic environment again Uh, affects the decision making or the functionality of the organization similarly we have ethical environment so it again uh, focuses on uh, like which kind of personality traits are most common in the country how the people behave in a different sort of thing like they will work throughout the day or what is the pay cost will uh, are they more interested in um, like people are of different nature some people are like you give me more money i'll do overtime some people are like it is against the na- uh, culture it is against um some law or something like that and some countries will give breaks in middle okay like we say siesta in some countries okay so those kind of ethical points we consider under the ethical environment so overall what we are studying is economic political ethical those factors how it is affecting the organization uh, culture of the organization next we have multi multicultural teams so if a team is having the people from different cultures what are the advantages what are the different disadvantages so in advantages you can see we can have uh, different types of exposure perspective so mm-hmm. overall we can say that it is kind of a dialectic analysis going on uh, so that we can have all the pros and cons of any topics but here it is not intentional it happened because people are from different cultures so we have these kind of advantages and disadvantages like it again depends how the bonding between the people are having so these advantages is uh, like not sure for 100% it is going to happen it's not like that but there is a possibility of having or facing these kind of disadvantages stereotyping high level of stress miscommunication interpersonal problems all those things next uh, if we see here we have communication leadership business greeting business meetings punctuality 
so we see uh, if we consider a point called communication that will be happening in different countries in a different manner similarly when we say leadership it will be happening in different countries in different manner so here we are just having some of the examples how that particular factor is working in country one compared to the country two so let's take an example of business greetings similarly we have leadership and communication but let's take an example of business greeting so here men have formal handshake in usa but in england they'll say hello if they are very close and if they are meeting for the first time they'll shake hands so that's how it is different in some countries like in japan they'll bow as opposed to giving a casual handshake or hug so they are more intended towards the cleanliness because they assume that germs and all they are considering just like india has namaste so similar kind of business greetings are varying across the countries and coming to business meeting so in some countries like they are so punctual uh, that if you are late even by a minute they will not alert but in some countries again if you are late by an hour it's fine okay but in again in some countries like in germany if you can take they'll have a meeting throughout the day which okay so overall it's like the meetings or everything you take it will be different across different countries so in specific in japan when we are talking meetings are long and non business polite conversation happens but it will be sticking to the agenda compared to the russia where meetings are very long nearly one day they have one meeting per day so that's an interesting fact and if you see people don't follow the agenda closely they talk about problems for hours without any solution and in spain business teams in spain as seen as a sort of family long familiarity bonding portugal meeting is briefly in discussing they don't take decision in meetings so they have meeting just to say that okay this is the status this is what is happening and uh, the meetings are not uh, there for taking the decision so this is some uh, uh, some of the examples which is shows that how business meetings are differs in different countries similarly in punctuality so like previously we have taken an example of japan where if the train is getting late they will be given a certificate saying that because of our, our because of the department transport department you got late so you can show this certificate in your organization so that's what happens in indly punctuality is not priority japan it is very punctual in spain they are punctual but again they Uh, make sure that they give break and the efficiency is continued in canada punctuality is very important so, uh, this is these are again some of the examples where punctuality is different across different cultures so yeah that was the end of this topic so if you have any queries in terms of international organizational behavior let me know in the comment section yeah that's it for now thank you